Here is what's coming up on your horizon. Well, in many ways, American manufacturing may feel a little like Mark Twain, who famously said the reports of his death were greatly exaggerated. Likewise, predictions of the imminent demise of manufacturing here in the state may be premature as well. Today, we examine a sector of the economy that economists see entering a new American renaissance. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, while parts of the economy may still be struggling out of the recession, American manufacturing is rebounding at a surprising pace. Since mid-2010, well over half a million new manufacturing jobs have been created and production output has surpassed even pre-recession levels. Now several factors are behind this surprising trend. Labor and transportation costs are rising in places like China. Meanwhile, here at home, Automation and globally competitive wages are making the Made in USA label more attractive. Now the boom in oil and gas production is also boosting energy related manufacturing while cheap natural gas is in itself fueling industries like steel and petrochemicals. Today we will examine all those issues but we begin with a family owned and operated manufacturer that credits its growth to its Oklahoma workforce. Joining me now is our Lisa Hines. That's right, Rob. In business since 1964, Air Power Systems is a manufacturing company in Tulsa. Employing around 50 people, they make winch kits used around the nation. For nearly 50 years, the Air Power System, or APSCO, has been supporting the oil field industry. You put the back panel on it too? Yes, sir. Larry Mocha is president of APSCO and says it's been a good experience. Put their knobs on and we'll bubble wrap the knobs. When we started Air Power, uh, we, we didn't have any money. So we bought the machines and everything. We brought it to my dad's garage and built a bunch of cabinets. And he began to sub out the machine shop operations, which mainly at that point were lathe and saw and that kind of thing. We've always been involved, because my dad's business with Ramsey Winch and before that Tulsa Winch, we've always been involved with oil field type equipment. The company was built, I believe, on customer service and offering the customer a quality product at a fair price and customer service. The one on the cover looks closest. Ken Thompson oversees APSCO's production and engineering and says he wouldn't work anywhere else. It's been a dream. So, uh, you go through life and you say, uh, do you enjoy going to work and everything? But uh, I can honestly say that in my job, that every day you come to work, you do what you want to do. I mean, you do fulfill your ambitions in life. Opportunity, things are made, you know, and it's the, the hands-on and manufacturing is diverse. It can be machining metals, it can be machining plastics, uh, whether assembly processes, but uh, everything you deal with in life has been put together by somebody. A fulfilling career in an industry that pays well, yet still struggles for workers. Due to the misconception that manufacturing is dirty hard work. It's so computerized, everything is, and is process driven. It's a new world for manufacturing. The skill set has changed. You know, 20 years ago we used to have people that would stand by a manual mill or a lathe. And I've got so those workers here today that can do that still. But it's changed. You, you need to learn, learn how to program and operate a CNC mill and lathe. And when you do, your future's really unlimited. Like C. Munoz. Munoz has been around manufacturing since he was eight, spending time with his father at work. Today, he supervises APSCO's machine shop. And I've been around it all my life. I enjoy it. It's a good, it's, it's, it, it works good, but it's the same process. It's not only that, but it's one of the things I, 
I enjoy to do because it's a skill you just can't take away. And a skill with real earning potential. Our machinists make more than our salespeople. They're really well paid and they're very much sought after uh, everywhere, not just in Tulsa, but everywhere. In demand and highly skilled, workers in manufacturing earn salaries that are 43% above the state average. We go for somebody that's entry level, who wants to work, who'll come in and, and show up for work and understands the, the social skills necessary to dress appropriately, to act appropriately. If we can get him in here, if we get in here somebody that wants to work and, and will show up every day and we feel like they're trainable, we'll train them. And we have a policy here at, at, at APSCO where we'll send them to school. We do that and we pay for their education. I had the opportunity to get, I had to take my skills and take it to a new level. And that's actually, being, a, being of a small business at that point in time, I didn't have that, the opportunity to get ahead and actually take the skills and move forward. APSCO gave me the opportunity to get ahead and do that, and it's a great company to work for. Because without such a dedicated workforce, manufacturing in Oklahoma wouldn't be as strong. And the whole state would suffer. This last year has been our best year. We just found out we broke through 10 million for the first time in our history. And we've been very successful, especially this time, at hiring the right people to help us develop and diversify and to get into cross-train and to get into new fields. The real power, the real goodness in the world comes from the workers that stand behind you and lift you up so that you're able to achieve that. And not only do I hope I remember that, I hope all of us as employers remember that. A strong company that's part of a vital sector of Oklahoma's economy. Manufacturing is an industry that creates wealth in and of itself. I think for every dollar spent on manufacturing or, or related industries, another buck and a half is generated as a result. Well, that's just by manufacturing by itself. When you export, like if we export out of Oklahoma, then what we're doing, we're growing the pie. Manufacturers help grow the pie. When you export stuff out of Oklahoma, you're bringing those dollars into Oklahoma. So you're helping to grow that pie. So most of our stuff is done outside of Oklahoma. All the work's done here, all the money comes back here, but our, our products sh are shipped all over the United States. Now APSCO uses a lean manufacturing process that keeps unwanted waste and needed storage space to a minimum. So the part you order today is made today and shipped today. Now I did notice in your story that Larry said he was having a hard time just finding employees. That's right. Many experienced workers are, you know, they're leaving these good paying jobs to go work for even better paying jobs in the aerospace and oil industry. So that leaves many vacancies available in the manufacturing industry. But as Larry puts it, these jobs are not real sexy. So many don't even consider it, even though they're well paying jobs. And Larry also says that many dropouts could be trained to do these jobs, but a lot of them end up on the streets or in prison. No, well, we're certainly looking for a skilled workforce. Thank you so much, Elisa. You're welcome, Rob. Now, when we return, I'll show you why some Hollywood celebrities may have a whole new appreciation for an Oklahoma company. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, many people associate manufacturing with sweaty hard work in less than ideal conditions, which is actually a far cry from today's high-tech factories. And while Oklahoma companies are producing all types of things, we found one whose product is downright prestigious. And our Keila Kellen went for a visit. Society Awards is the leading manufacturer for high-end custom awards and recognition products, working to design and make awards that many of us are familiar with, such as the MTV Music Awards' Moon Man, the Emmy Statuette, and the Golden Globes. And the Emmy goes to... Every time a winner's name is called, some of Hollywood's most coveted hardware can trace its origins back to the Sooner State in Grove, Oklahoma. We are expanding. We have a need to expand. Society Awards is the world's best designer, manufacturer, and fulfiller of custom awards. We started out uh, several years ago focusing on the entertainment industry where we're fortunate enough to be making awards, such as the Emmy Awards, the Golden Globes, many, many others that y'all have heard of before. 
Chief Operating Officer of Society Awards, Larry Maloney, says that they produce the trophies for most of the major award shows, which in turn has created a shortage of storage space at their New York City headquarters. The facility will uh, receive awards, in some instances assemble, uh, personalize, ship, and handle a lot of the fulfillment of these programs and it's wonderful, first, to have this great space to accommodate this growth, but second, to have a second distribution hub. When looking for another place to store and distribute products, Oklahoma native and company founder David Moritz looked towards home. We needed uh, a warehouse and we needed more space, um, and obviously that's not something that you do in Manhattan, you know, kind of store products and have kind of an assembly uh, area like this. We have uh, a place, it's, it's smaller and it's more for like marketing purposes or like New York based clients, but we were overflowing there and we needed somewhere uh, else to go, and obviously this was one of the um, logical places to look first. Not only because it's David's hometown, but Grove also provides a more central shipping location with easier access to clients across the nation. We have, you know, thousands of clients and in our industry, obviously, if it's the nicest product in the industry, we make it, whatever it is. Obviously, the entertainment things that everyone's very familiar with, but every other industry all has their own highest honor and highest accolade, and we manufacture that in many cases if it's new, design it or improve it. David says his first big deal was a redesign contract with the Golden Globes. And from there, other agreements were to make statuettes for a growing number of award shows. Every project that we take on, we find a way to make it better. We're very uh, concerned with quality, with aesthetics, um, with making things you know, objectively look beautiful and so that everyone can be proud uh, to have them. And we always try to find a way to make even an iconic item better in some way. Um, I'd also like to thank, we don't have a lot of time. And while he may never get thanked for his life's work, David says it's thanks enough knowing that they'll be treasured for a lifetime. Founder and CEO David Moritz is known as a serial entrepreneur and started the company because he found a lack in a front runner to produce products for the awards industry. David said that winning the contract for the Golden Globe Awards was monumental to the business and hopes to one day produce all the entertainment awards. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, manufacturing's new job demand. But first, exporting Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma exports hit a record high last year, thanks in large part to the high concentration of energy-related manufacturers here in the state. That along with sales from transportation equipment and computer and electronic products has Oklahoma goods heading all around the world. Our Andy Barth headed to Duncan, Oklahoma to visit a manufacturer with a global focus. As sparks fly and iron clangs, local manufacturing is hard at work to keep up with its strong demand. We're the largest employer. Uh, we employ close to 400 employees in a town of 4,500 people. Brad Bowles is the president of Wilco Manufacturing and says his family's business is booming. We went from a more domestic company to now we're a global company. In 2009, Wilco won the uh, Oklahoma Governor's Export Award. We've exported actually 50% of our sales, either directly or indirectly, were exported internationally. And although he's president of the company, Brad is the third generation of Bowles gentlemen to run the business been to several different countries setting up some other shops to, to assist us in our overseas operations. Chris Bowles is Brad's father and the second generation in the Wilco dynasty. Chris's job entails heading up their international division. I just got back from Africa, had a business in, in South, South Africa that was building some tanks for us that are going to be shipped to Angola to do a, a bulk plant and been overseeing that a little bit and, and trying to get everything ready to go to Angola. But the man responsible for big business in a tiny town is Wilco founder Pete Bowles. It's a good feeling to see my son and my grandson take it and go on and, and it's, it's been a good thing. Uh, makes your head get big sometimes but then you go back to reality 
that uh, it's it's been good, been great. And Wilco's top priority, its customers. But we take care of our customers, you know, even if it means us losing on the job, even if that means we got to work 24 hours a day. You know, at the end of the day, we realize that without the customers, you know, we don't have any work. Supplying the world and employing our state, all from small town America. If you want to learn more about Oklahoma's growing export sector, Andy has a special feature under our value added section at OKHorizon.com. Well, manufacturing in this country remains a force in the national economy and is a cornerstone of our state's current resurgence. Yet the sector is vastly different than just 20 years ago, doing great part to lean management practices and innovation and technology. Earlier, I sat down with the Department of Commerce's Deidre Myers to take a look at manufacturing in this week's Economic Snapshot. Deidre, are there misconceptions about manufacturing, not only here in Oklahoma, but really across the nation? I think there definitely are, Rob. Um, there has been a big change in an evolution in manufacturing, and manufacturing today is not what manufacturing was like in the 1970s or 1980s. So when people say, well, manufacturing is a dying industry, they're somewhat correct in that the old manufacturing is definitely gone. That, that kind of manufacturing has been offshore because it doesn't require a knowledge or a skill. So you want to go to the very cheapest labor possible. And those, quite, quite frankly, aren't the jobs that we want Oklahomans to have. We want Oklahomans to have jobs that have good wages so that they can invest in their household and have economic opportunities for their children. How manufacturing has changed is that it has become much more specific. It has become uh, much more oriented towards a particular knowledge or a particular skill. It's become much more technical, oriented towards computer systems. And so the people who work in manufacturing are actually very, very skilled and have very high wages. Also, the environment is very different. A lot of people have this old idea of manufacturing like in the steel mills of the upper Midwest, and that's not it at all. Manufacturing is in a clean room where everything is in, measured in nano and micro. And so it, it's a very different type of industry today, but it's thriving in Oklahoma. And let's talk more about that. You say it's thriving in Oklahoma. We're actually seeing some growth in the sector? Absolutely. Over the past year, Oklahoma manufacturing has actually grown by 5%. And over about the past 18 months, Oklahoma has ranked in the top three in terms of year-over-year -year growth rate in the entire U.S. If we look at just the last year, there are 18 states that had no manufacturing growth or manufacturing loss. However, Oklahoma has grown by f over 5%. Now, a lot of that is around the energy and aerospace. For instance, we manufacture a lot of the pumps, valves, and compressors that are being used in the current extraction that's going on, the energy revival of the entire Midwest, particularly in North Dakota and Western Canada. So we're exporting those goods to those other states and to other countries and creating a lot of wealth for Oklahomans. Now, what can we do as a state to ensure that this growth continues? Well, the number one thing is workforce. We have an older workforce in terms of the production occupations that go into manufacturing, and so we're going to have a lot of people retiring. When we look at the next 10 years, we're going to need nearly 90,000 people trained in particular occupations that are either producing manufactured goods or transporting them to markets. And so that's something that we need to think about, is how do we educate students who are in school today that manufacturing Manufacturing is a wonderful career opportunity, high wages, uh, and it has a lot of opportunity. And how do we get them trained into those, into those career pathways? The other thing we've got to do is remember that there's a pipeline. And like any kind of career, you want to advance. So it, you don't just stop once you get a skill. You continue to grow throughout your work life and continue to get other skills so that you continue to increase in terms of your wages and, and the abilities that you have. All right, well, we certainly appreciate your insights. Deidre Myers with Oklahoma's Department of Commerce. Oklahoma Horizon is now portable. Just subscribe to our weekly podcast. Visit iTunes.com where you can download our show for your listening or viewing convenience. Well, for years we've heard about manufacturers shuttering their American factories and sending those jobs offshore. And while that can and still does happen, a new trend has emerged, something called inshoring. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. Rob, ASCO is one of the leading aerospace manufacturers in the world. 
With six other locations around the globe, the ASCO Corporation recently staked its claim in Stillwater, Oklahoma. With Oklahoma having a strong history in flight, another aerospace victory has landed in the state. In a packed room, the ASCO Corporation announced it's ready to go to work with the Stillwater community. We came to Stillwater because we uh, read about mercury leaving the plant and uh, we were looking for a facility where we would find people to work for, to work with us and uh, to find a community which was eager to have us in the community. Trudeau Mottmans is the vice president of ASCO and says Stillwater is the right fit. When uh, visiting the facility and visiting the Oklahoma State University, we were also introduced to Meridian Technology. And uh, we found that this was the right mix for us, together with uh, the beautifulness of Stillwater. ASCO manufactures high lift devices and complex mechanical systems and employs more than 1,200 people worldwide. To help prepare Oklahoma workers for ASCO's needs, Meridian Technology Center sent its machining instructor to work beside ASCO's operators and machinists in Belgium. Meridian Technology Center's Director of Business and Industry Services, Rebecca Easton. I'm going to talk to you today just briefly about our projected training process. We anticipate about the middle of 2013 is when ASCO will be hiring the majority of their staff. We'll continue to offer that training on through uh, as long as ASCO needs uh, to staff up, but the bulk of their staffing will take place over 2014 into 2015. And Stillwater Mayor John Bartley says ASCO and Stillwater share common goals for the community. It's a beautiful day for our state. ASCO brings what I think are three, the three most important things that our community needs to be focused on, which are the economic development, the primary job growth, but they also have a focus on the infrastructure and also on quality of life. And those three elements between economic development, infrastructure, and quality of life, that's what we're focusing on as a city, and those are elements that ASCO has talked about in their, in their plans and what they believe in also, so it's a great fit. I think what we have uh, got... And aside from the benefits to Stillwater, Oklahoma Secretary of Commerce Dave Lopez says the state of Oklahoma benefits as a whole. Greatly, so thank you so much for that. Bringing another aerospace company is huge for the state because what that does is gives you greater scale and you have customers as well as uh, suppliers like ASCO close by. Uh, for example, Boeing showing a greater presence in Oklahoma and now ASCO that supplies parts to Boeing is here. So again, it brings that synergy together that creates and grows the economy. The Oklahoma aerospace industry employs roughly 1 in 11 Oklahomans, with industrial outputs exceeding $12.5 billion annually, including exports of $4.4 billion to 170 countries. Such Oklahoma Secretary of Science and Technology, Stephen McKee. extremely important to Oklahoma State University. We have a terrific amount to offer in terms of an educated workforce, the availability of that workforce, uh, space, uh, a willingness to work with the companies to give the companies what they need to succeed. If they succeed, we succeed. And McKeever says to be successful in aerospace, you have to be global. Just talking now with ASCO, the uh, raw material for this, uh, for the parts that they will make will come shipped here from Austria. They will make parts, send them to Spirit in Tulsa. They will ship them to Mitsubishi in Japan, who will incorporate them into wings and ship the whole wing to the state of Washington to put on a Boeing aircraft. And that's just an idea of how global this whole industry is. It's quite remarkable. Now the company is rated in the top 100 aerospace companies worldwide and manufacturers for airlines with more than 50 seats. So Andy, what will this new company mean for the community of Stillwater? Rob, ASCO plans to hire 600 employees and invest $100 million by the year 2015. They also expect the average salary to be around $40,000 per year. All right, thank you so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, the future of wind energy. An Oklahoma show for the heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. 
Well, manufacturing is a vital and growing part of Oklahoma's job market, yet it is missing one thing, and that's workers. To keep the state's current level of manufacturing power over the next 10 years, we'll need nearly 40,000 new people in production occupations and another 51,000 in transportation to move those goods to market. And with Oklahoma in the top three in the nation in manufacturing growth over the past 18 months, even those projections may be too conservative. And when you account for the fact that Oklahoma manufacturers provide an average paycheck of $60,000, which just happens to be about 43% higher than the state average, manufacturing is an occupation that once again could be the backbone of Oklahoma's economy. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next time.